Hello ladies and gentle ladies and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial for Forge 1.20 and in this tutorial we're going to be covering syncing our block entity data to the client. So currently if we have some code like this so we just have a basic tick counter which we increment every tick and we just save and load that in the NBT. Now if we currently use this and we try and see what the ticks are on the client you you will notice that they never change. So I have my example syncs block that I've just created. So I'm going to place it down. And if we right click it, you'll see that on the server, we have ticks 41. On the client, it says the ticks are zero. And you'll see on the client, it never changes, but on the server, that is always incrementing. Now, even if we go ahead and reload the world, so if we load all the way back in, we'll see that still the client will not have an updated tick value. It will still be zero. So this obviously isn't ideal, for most things that you would want in a block entity. So I'm gonna show you the three different ways in which we can fix this. And we'll probably be using two of them. And the other one I'll briefly mention, but we'll cover more detail in a future tutorial since it's a lot, it's a lot more complex. So let's get started. So what we're going to want to do first of all is close the game since that's no use to us now inside of our block entity we'll talk about first when you load into the game right when that chunk first loads what it will do so we'll get it to sync to the client when the chunk first loads and then we'll talk about doing it just kind of as you go along so to sync on the chunk load we want to override two methods so first we want to override get update tag and effectively what this method is for is it gets the actual tag or the actual MBT data that will be used to update the client. So generally what you do in here is you just create a new compound tag. So if you go compound tag MBT and you can just do super dot get update tag. And if you do that, you see that just returns a new compound tag. So that just gives us our MBT. And generally all you will do to that is just call save additional and pass in the MBT and then just return MBT. And obviously our save additional method is this one right here. And this just saves all of our data that we want to sync. However, there may be a circumstance where there is data that you don't need to sync or you don't want to sync. And so it is often recommended that you actually create a new method that will save your specific data that you want to sync. Alternatively, you can just straight up do that inside of get update tag. So instead of calling save additional, you could basically go ahead and copy paste this right here and put it in here. And what that would do is that would give you your tutorial mod data, you would put your tick counter in there, and then you put that inside of the MBT in our tutorial mod key. And that would work too. So say you had some other data in here. I don't know what other data you would have, but maybe you would have, I don't know, I'm just gonna make up something here. So you could put that in there and maybe you, you don't need this data to ever sync to the client. And so you wouldn't want to send it in the update tag because obviously that's a waste of bandwidth. So you effectively just do that in here, but you don't do that in here. Now for this specific circumstance, we only want to sync what's in save additional and so we can just straight up call save additional on the MBT and that is much easier for our particular circumstance but just note that if you ever want to not sync data then this is where you choose to decide that in my own mod personally uh, in my library mod I have two methods that I call and what that does is you pass in the actual data that you want to sync and it just automatically handles this uh, update tag kind of thing with that data you say you want to be synced um, you could obviously create something like that too but I'm not going to cover that because that's fairly abstract I would say. Okay let's move on to the second thing you need and that is handle update tag and this is what happens when this update tag here is received on the client. So you'll see in here by default this just calls the load method right here so it will just call this load method by default which for us would be fine but once again if you are loading something specific right so if you weren't saving everything and you weren't trying to load everything then you just need to make sure you load 
everything correctly in here so once again if we had that list tag that we were loading in here but we weren't wanting to load that on the client we would only want to put this in here we would just put tag in there and we would do that instead i would just name this tag to mbt so we know what that is and you would just do something like this so you're only loading what you're actually saving however once again as, as i say um since we are just doing the exact same thing as what we're saving uh, we don't actually even need this method since you know as i said by default we just call load so that's not really an issue however if you want to be safe about it you could just call load yourself which is something uh, I generally like to do instead of calling that super method, but it's completely up to you. There's many different ways in which you could achieve syncing. This is just the ways that I'm going to be showing you. So that is your handle update tag, and I'll just leave it like that, I think is fine. And if we go ahead and run that, that will actually go ahead and save when we reload the game. So if we load back into the game, you would see that the client actually has the updated value. And when you close it and reopen it again, it will update again. But that won't update just willy nilly. Uh, it only updates when you load into the game or when that chunk is loaded, since this is only called when that chunk is loaded. So maybe we want it to happen whenever we want. Maybe we want it to sync when we want it to sync, right? Maybe we want it to sync every single tick. So we want in here some way to say sync to the client, right? And obviously, ideally, you wouldn't sync something every single tick. That's not ideal. If you plan on doing something like that, then maybe you would just make this tick method available to the client too. But I'm just going to show you, you know, an example of how we can actually do this. So what we're going to want to do is we're still going to want this update tag so that's actually not going to change this will be used for both different ways that we can sync or in fact all different ways that we can sync and so this is always going to stay there the only difference with this other way we're going to do is we're going to need to actually tell it what packet to use so this second way that we're going to be doing is synchronizing on a block update so what we would do here is we would say this dot level dot send block updated we would pass in this dot world position and then we would just give it get block state get block state and we would give it block dot update all and what that will do is that will send an update to this block position causing a block update and it will use this as the old state and this is the new state right because the state actually isn't changing we we just want to cause a normal block update and all we do in here is we pass in block dot update all which is just um equal to the value of three which tells the client that it's updating everything or it will send the whole update to the client and that just means that we can then override the method get update packet and in here we can simply you'll see by default that it just returns null right so there is no packet being sent but what we want to return in here is client bound block entity data packet dot create and we just pass in this as the block entity. And what that will do is that will just create the block entity data packet. And if you look inside of here, you'll see that it goes ahead and actually handles all of the data it needs. So it sends over the position, it sends over the block entity type, and it also sends over the MBT. And then it goes ahead and handles that here. So if you look inside of here, and if you look through the implementations, you would eventually find, here you go, that it calls the on data packets, which we now need to override too. So if we go on data packets and in the super of here, you'll see that by default, it calls our load method once again. So same as the handle update tag is if you're not loading all of the data that you're saving, then you need to go ahead and actually write your loading in here. So you just do something like this. And instead of mbt.get compound, you'll say packet.get tag and that just gives you the data like that but do, do note that this tag could be null so just make sure it's not null of course and what we can actually do since we're using handle update tag two, we can actually just call handle update tag packets dot get tag. And that just saves us the effort there. Or we can just call load packet dot get tag. That works too. But actually, I'm just going to leave it as the super. Or moreover, I'm not even going to override that method since the super does some null checks as well, which are generally quite useful to have. So for our specific circumstance, I'm also going to remove this handle update tag since by default, 
default it just does load anyways so we can leave it at just this and that leaves us a block update and also a uh, chunk update now I did mention there was a third way and you may have a question of why is there a third way so the reason there is a third way is maybe you don't want to cause a block update or maybe you actually want to do the other way around and go ahead and send over something different so maybe you wanted to send it from the client to the server alternatively maybe you didn't want to send it to all of the clients and you only wanted to send it to say the clients that are currently in that chunk or you wanted to do something different and the way you would do this is by synchronizing using a custom network message also known as a packet and this is generally considered the most optimized approach to sending over data since it means you can choose exactly how you serialize that data us just sending over a simple integer it's not going to be any different but if you have maybe a lot of data you want to send over or you want to send over specific data at specific times then custom packet are definitely the best approach to doing that because it means you can send different data when it needs to be sent rather than always syncing the same data at the same times now I'm not going to show you how you can do that in this tutorial I will leave a quick link to the dot for the community wiki in the description which will show you that but alternatively I will be covering that in a future tutorial too hopefully quite soon as well uh, but for now let's go ahead and and test that this all works it should do but we'll have to go and have a look so I'll see you once the game has loaded so if we go ahead and place it down and we right click you will instantly see that it's actually up to date now you will notice that the client is like one tick behind that's just to be expected it's never going to be perfectly synced um, when you're dealing with like updating every single tick because it's always going to take about a tick to send a block update so if you really were worried about this and if you for some reason wanted to sync ticks um, you would just when you send it over to the client you would just increment that tick by another one that just means the client would receive the correct tick but I don't think that's really a big deal for like most scenarios you would never really send over ticks that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't make any sense uh, but you see that all updates and you'll also see that if we save and quit and reload you should see that the client actually still has the same value as the server so yeah it's exactly the same or well one tick behind but that's irrelevant but that's pretty much it well that is it so i hope you guys found this useful hopefully you can now sync all of the data that your block entities need to be synced and that allows us in the next tutorial to cover things such as guis and um you know block entity renderers and all those kind of things where the client might need data that's inside of the block entity specifically the next tutorial will probably be on containers and screens so that we can actually have a GUI showing our items that are inside of our block entity think of something like a chest that's going to be the plan for the next tutorial tutorial so yeah i hope you found it useful obviously if you did give it a like and subscribe if you have any problems you can join my discord server linked in the description below or you can just chat and hang out there too if you'd like to support me continue making these modding tutorials you can join my patreon for a couple dollars a month and that just helps me to continue making these at a fairly regular pace and yeah if you're also not aware i am now streaming every so often I don't have a set schedule currently but hopefully soon I'll come up with a set schedule for that and I'm just doing some fun uh, development streams and maybe some more exciting stuff soon as well but yeah I will see you soon goodbye